The Forbidden and Limited list has been an essential part of Yu-Gi-Oh! for what seems like the game's entire history. However, early on, it was just a limited list. That would all change in 2004 with the introduction of one deck that would also go on to be the cause of the first Tier 0 format in Yu-Gi-Oh!'s history. My name is Avery, and this is a 2004 Chaos Control Format Retrospective. I'm going to pick at least two light monsters. I picked Magician of Faith just because they were heavily played at the time when Yada Grasu was around, uh, usually in sets of three in most people's decks. Uh, you want to do this just because you want to make sure at least one light monster ends up in the graveyard. So if they give you one of the Magician of Faith, uh, the other light monster does go to the graveyard. Next thing you want to do is pick both your Witch and your Sangan. This is really important because, uh, you know, if you only picked Witch or Sangan and not both of them, they could end up giving you the Witch or the Sangan and then that would ruin the combo. You need at least one of these two cards in your graveyard because essentially they are going to do the same thing and then finally we're going to use dark magician of chaos uh, as our last monster it doesn't really matter what it is as long as it's a dark monster this is important because if uh, you know, they, they select your witch or Sangen to give to you. You want to make sure that you have another dark monster in your graveyard to remove besides the remaining witch or Sangen that could be in the graveyard. All right, so for this scenario, uh, we're going to say they give us uh, DMOC because that would probably be the most logical thing they would give us. Um, but it really doesn't matter which card it is. Any card they give us will be perfectly fine. It doesn't matter because um, one of the witch and Sangens is going to go to the graveyard. All right, so for this instance, where they're going to give us the MOC, the rest of these cards go to the graveyard, and then we can continue on with the combo. We're going to go ahead and activate Monster Reborn. We need to reborn either Witch or Sangan. Uh, for this instance, I'm just going to bring back a Witch of the Black Forest, but either card will do nicely. All right, they're both essentially going to get us the same effect off. All right, and finally what we're going to do is we're going to summon out our Chaos Emperor Dragon Envoy of the End. We're going to do this by removing uh, light and a dark monster. So we're going to remove our Sangan and one of our Magicians of Faith from the graveyard to go ahead and special summon him on out. Now Chaos Emperor Dragon's got an awesome effect. You get to send all cards on both players' sides of the field and in their hands to the graveyards, leaving both players with no cards on the field and no cards in their hand. This is going to work out really good for us because when we send our Witch of the Black Forest to the graveyard along with the rest of our cards, it's going to activate her effect. Finally, we're going to get to go ahead and search out our Yada Garasu from our deck to our hand. Um, now, your opponent has nothing on the field. They have no cards in their hand. We can finally do our normal summon for the turn, which is our Yada Garasu, and we can go ahead and attack. We're going to attack for 200. Yada's got an effect that states whenever you do battle damage to your opponent, they must skip their next draw phase. So now they have no cards on the field, no cards in their hand, and they cannot draw. You gotta return to your hand at the end phase since it's a spirit monster. So your opponent's gonna go on their turn. They're not gonna draw any card. They have no cards on the field, no cards in their hand. They cannot do any sort of plays. This is gonna revert back to your turn. You can then normal summon out your Yada yet again, attack for 200. Uh, their opponent is gonna skip their next draw phase. They're now stuck in the Yada lock. At this time, Beatdown and Hand Control were the two biggest decks of 2003. After the 2003 World Championship ended, the metagame remained largely the same for the rest of the year outside of a few new staples. However, this all changed seemingly overnight with the release of the TCG's 10th booster set in early 2004, Invasion of Chaos. Invasion of Chaos introduced a powerful new set of monsters that could be special summoned simply by banishing one light and one dark monster from the graveyard. While special summoning is commonplace in the modern game, at this point it was almost unheard of for monsters to be able to special summon themselves. This marked a significant paradigm shift in the speed of the game, starting the move away from normal summoning being the primary way to summon monsters. The core of the 2004 Chaos deck lay in two different Chaos monsters from Invasion of Chaos, Black Luster Soldier Envoy of the Beginning and Chaos Emperor Dragon Envoy of the End. BLS was unique at the time for being a monster with two separate but useful effects. It was also notable for having considerably higher attack than previous monsters used in meta decks. This, coupled with being able to attack twice in a row, made it a very dangerous threat. While Black Luster Soldier marked a significant upward shift in power, it couldn't be properly compared to that of its big brother, Chaos Emperor Dragon Envoy of the End. Chaos Emperor Dragon had the ability to destroy all cards on the field and in both players' hands when summoned. During this meta, a total wipe like this was extremely difficult for a player to recover from. Chaos Emperor Dragon
Dragon's effect is even more powerful when considered with how easy it makes achieving the Yada Lock. While previously the lock was only attainable through destroying the opponent's hand with individual card effects, and Yada was more often used simply as another hand control aspect. CED allowed for a relatively consistent achievement of the complete lock. All a player had to do was have Chaos Emperor Dragon on the field, and then they would just need a Sangin or Witch of the Black Forest on the field with it, and then use Chaos Emperor Dragon's effect, allowing that player to search out Yada Garasu, and then summon it and attack with it, achieving the lock. While the Chaos monsters were extremely powerful, they couldn't be run in a deck with just any random cards. Chaos decks heavily encouraged mixing a variety of different light and dark monsters, which was opposed to a deck like Hand Control, which primarily focused on dark monsters. The first and foremost of these light monsters was DD Warrior Lady, released in Dark Crisis. DD Warrior Lady had the advantage of being both light attribute and being able to banish a monster it battled with. Because this banishing triggered whenever DD Warrior Lady battled, whether it was attacking or being attacked, it served as a powerful defensive card and could be used offensively as well by intentionally attacking into a threatening monster to banish it regardless of that monster's attack. Due to DD Warrior Lady's popularity in the deck, Shining Angel was used to get it out faster and more consistently. One of the other major light monsters that saw usage in 2004 Chaos decks was Reflect Bounder. Reflect Bounder served a more defensive purpose than DD Warrior Lady, but still could control what the opponent could do in terms of battle, making building a field presence much easier. For dark monsters, Mystic Tomato Don Zaluk and Spirit Reaper all still saw use as holdovers from the era of hand control. However, as Chaos proved to be the more dominant strategy, they took the back seat and were usually only run at one or two copies each. Breaker the Magical Warrior also saw universal usage during this period. Combining together 1900 attack and the ability to destroy a spell or trap made him extremely powerful, especially for the time. In addition to these extremely powerful light and dark monsters, a wide variety of different light and dark tech choices were used by players of the deck, especially at the local level. Examples of other light monsters used included Thunder Naya Nyan for its attack power, White Magical Hat for its hand control ability, and Magician of Faith for its ability to recycle spells. The dark monsters used were larger the same as those used to bring the 2003 hand control deck to success, including Don Zalug, Spirit Reaper, and Mystic Tomato. The final major tech card in 2004 Chaos Control was Magical Scientist. Although this card initially rose to prominence through a burn deck focused around it, its ability to special summon any number of fusion monsters in a turn for low cost gave it great versatility. A player with Magical Scientist could summon a variety of useful fusion monsters, and if they were sent to the graveyard before the end of the turn, they could be used as fodder for summoning a Chaos monster. One of the most popular monsters summoned with Magical Scientist's effect, outside of explicit light and dark fodder for Chaos monsters, was Thousand Eyes Restrict. While this card only saw minor usage through Magical Scientist's effect in 2004, it would foreshadow much more widespread play in the 2005 format. You can watch that GOAT format retrospective on the channel as well. While regionals had started to occur by 2004, the results were not as well documented and verified as regional events would be in later years. So because of this, we'll be looking at the top two chaos deck lists from the Battle City Amsterdam tournament that occurred in September of 2004, just a few weeks before the end of the full power chaos format. So our first deck list is gonna be from Oscar Teep, who got second place. Obviously the first thing to note in this deck is how almost entirely composed of single cards, except for Mystical Space Typhoon and DD Warrior Lady this deck is. This is largely due to the high number of high power essential quote unquote staple cards that had landed on the limited list by this point. Beyond that, most of the main deck is composed of relatively standard choices for a chaos deck, with a relatively even amount of light and dark monsters as well as all of the most powerful limited spells and traps of the time. The main interesting choices in this deck list are the inclusion of Kaiku and Berserkerilla in the main deck. Berserkerilla gave decks the ability to beat through almost every other level 4 lower monster that saw widespread play at the time, making it a valuable asset for keeping the opponent from amassing too many monsters. Kaiku also is not an extremely common card choice for the main deck, usually being relegated to the side deck. However, considering the complete dominance of Chaos in the meta, including answers in the main deck seems a very reasonable choice. As for a side deck, its most interesting feature is the inclusion of a zombie core. This would allow the deck to be transformed from a standard Chaos control deck into a zombie Chaos deck in games 2 and 3. Next, let's look at the first place decklist piloted by Frizzo de Boer. 
Frizzo's deck, at least at first glance, seems quite notably different from Oscar's. However, both decks still maintain largely the same core of spells and traps, as well as a decent number of light and dark monsters to fuel the two chaos monsters. The most notable difference in the monster lineup with this deck is the lack of DD Warrior Lady, an essential staple at the time. By opting for White Magical Hat as a light target over DD Warrior Lady, the deck focuses much more on hand control than a standard chaos deck. Frizzo's deck also makes use of Creature Swap to take advantage of the fact that his deck runs mostly weaker monsters, allowing him to leverage the powerful creatures that his opponents would no doubt summon against him. The final notable cards in the main deck are the inclusion of Wabaku and Scapegoat. While both of these cards saw play in older formats, they were sensible inclusions to counter the extremely powerful Chaos monsters from performing OTKs. His side deck includes a variety of different cards, but mainly they are counters to Chaos decks in the form of Kaiku and Soul Release, which could banish the required light and dark monsters from the opponent's graveyard. He's also running Electric Snake, a familiar side deck card from the Hand Control era along with Despair from the Dark, which functions similarly to Electric Snake in that it would special summon itself when discarded from the hand. These cards made it so that not only were discard effects such as the hand control spells and neutered, but also to counter the hand destruction of Chaos Emperor Dragon, which would be completely and utterly devastating otherwise. Due to Chaos's almost immediate dominance of the emerging competitive scene in Yu-Gi-Oh!, the game saw the appearance of the first Tier 0 format. For those of you who don't know, this is a term that gets thrown around occasionally in the modern Yu-Gi-Oh! community, and usually refers to a meta where one singular deck dominates over half of all wins in tournaments. Chaos definitely fit this definition, because around 85% of decks at the 2004 US National Championship included both Chaos Emperor Dragon and Black Luster Soldier, with many of those focusing on them in a Chaos deck. While decks before Chaos did not have the greatest variance compared to later metagames, hence why most of the time people would refer to Chaos decks as, quote, cookie cutter chaos, there was still a distinction between hand control and beatdown strategies, and a relatively wide variety of different tech choices that were used within those two strategies. Chaos, on the other hand, was largely identical amongst almost all of the top lists that came out of the major events of the time. To curb this growing dominance that chaos had, Konami instituted the first ever forbidden list. Instead of just limiting a card to only one copy per deck, they forbid the usage of certain cards entirely. This was first implemented in the OCG, specifically Japan and East Asia, in March of 2004. However, their first forbidden list did not put either of the Chaos Monsters to zero, instead opting to only get rid of extreme game-swinging cards that could be splashed in any deck. The main cards on note here were Yadagorasu, Fiberjar, Raigeki, Harpy's Feather Duster, Delinquent Duo, and Imperial Order. Because of this new forbidden list, all of those cards were unplayable at the 2004 World Championship, making Yadalock not a legal strategy, unlike its status in the TCG at the time. Following in the footsteps of the OCG's Forbidden List, the TCG announced its own Forbidden List at the end of August 2004, one month after the 2004 World Championship. This list would not go into effect until the beginning of October, but it was notably more harsh towards Chaos than its OCG predecessor. It banned Chaos Emperor Dragon, Sangin, and Witch of the Black Forest, in addition to the cards I mentioned earlier. The exceptions being Delinquent Duo and Fiber Jar remaining legal for play. The TCG Forbidden List also got rid of Dark Hole, Graceful Charity, United We Stand, and Mirror Force. However, within the next two iterations of the TCG's Forbidden and Limited list, these last four cards would all see a return, at least for a time. The introduction of the Forbidden List not only started to move the meta away from dedicated Chaos decks, but also noted a distinct shift in how all future metas would generally transition. Instead of metas shifting due entirely to new and more powerful cards being released, they would shift because older decks would get their key cards removed from the card pool entirely, forcing a shift. Whether or not this has been good or bad for the game has been largely onto the format in question. But it is undoubtedly a key force in how the competitive metagame for Yu-Gi-Oh! has been shaped over the years. While the Forbidden List took out the arguably more powerful half of the Chaos duo that had shaped the metagame for the majority of 2004, Chaos was still a powerful deck as it had remained free of the Forbidden section. Black Luster Soldier moved into the spotlight, becoming the main focus of Chaos decks. Dark Magician of Chaos, another monster release in Invasion of Chaos, also saw a slight uptick in usage. It was more prominent due to its powerful ability to recover the powerful spell cards that the game was starting to shift its focus back towards. However, Demok did lack the easy summoning condition of BLS in CED, preventing it from fully catching on as an essential card. The nail in the coffin for the 2004 iteration of the Chaos Control deck was the forbidding of Painful Choice and Magical Scientist in the April 2005 Forbidden and Limited list. 
With these two cards gone from the game, the ability to rapidly fill the graveyard with monsters to summon out BLS was greatly stunted, turning him from the main goal of a deck into a more uncommonly summoned ace monster. The Forbidding a Magical Scientist also got rid of the main way that Thousand Eyes Restrict had been summoned up to this point, motivating the shift towards alternative strategies for summoning out this extremely powerful monster. This would lead to the shift in the meta that eventually transitioned Chaos Control into Goat Control. While BLS was run in every Goat Control deck, it wasn't the focus in the same way that it had been in 2004. However, even this would end when BLS met the same fate as Chaos Emperor Dragon in the October 2005 Forbidden and Limited list. While Chaos Monsters, including Chaos Sorcerer and later BLS again when he came off the Forbidden list in 2011, would see play into today's game, they would never be the dominant force that they were before the first Forbidden list. In addition, the most powerful of the Chaos Monsters, Chaos Emperor Dragon, remained on the TCG Forbidden and Limited list until an errata of his effect killed his ability to be so overpowered. Howard. This errata neutered his effect, preventing its controlling player from activating other cards on the same turn, solidly preventing it from ever being able to become the deadly threat that he was upon his initial release. While the deck did not survive past the initial Forbidden list, the evolution of the 2004 Chaos deck partially became Go Control, which is to this day the namesake of one of the most famous periods in the history of competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! I hope you guys enjoyed that retrospective. I'm sorry I didn't really talk about any other decks that were in this meta, and that's quite honestly just because of the fact that there really weren't any other decks to compete. You either played Hand Control, Beat Down, or Chaos Control, and Chaos Control was Tier 0, so you played to either beat that deck or you played that deck. That's unfortunately one of the bad things about Tier 0 formats. It's that you either play that deck or you get beat by that deck, or you build a deck specifically to beat that deck. And especially during this time, as you saw in the deck list, there were a lot of good cards that were one ofs, which pretty much made all the decks the same, minus a couple of the cards. Remember, during this time, there weren't really archetypes. We just had good stuff dot deck, similar to what we see in 2022's game with based. So keep that in mind as you think about this type of format or even play this format this format's very fun to go back to i've even had some fun going back to this and yada should always be banned so thank you guys for watching i hope that you enjoyed thank you all so much for the support with over 700 subscribers i hope that you will continue to share the videos around and keep on subscribing we will one day hit a thousand subscribers but until then thank you for watching and i will see you in the next video